to give you strength, to give you victory, to be able to overcome in your life. I love the story of Dr. Ben Carson. He grew up in the projects in Chicago, and he was on the path uh, to becoming a thug, a hoodlum. He was very angry as a child, single mom, and all these things. He found Christ in middle school. And it began to change and transform his life. How can a guy growing up in the projects become the world's number one neurosurgeon? Can you imagine that? And he wrote that book, Healing Hands. And uh, all kinds of things happened in his life. Why? Because he found God and God's love. He found God's purpose for his life. And he got all of that, what he said, his rage and anger that was in his heart. It was taken out and filled with God's love. And there are schools that are named after him. He uh, has a cabinet position uh, right now in the uh, Trump administration. All of these things come because God who lives uh, in us, he's preparing us to rule and reign with him. This is what Jesus said to his disciples. He says, you are those who have stood by me in my trials. This is Luke 22. Are we standing with God in the trials that we're facing today? And he says, and I confer on you a kingdom, <clears throat> excuse me, just as my father has conferred one on me. You see how the process goes? God, Jesus can confer on us a kingdom. Why? Because he's received that kingdom from his father. And so now he's passing it on to us. So he says, I confer on you a kingdom just as my father has conferred one on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That song that we sang earlier, casting down your crowns beside the glassy sea. God is preparing us to rule and reign with him. Well, he's disciplining us. He's training us up. If we can't overcome the little uh, mundane obstacles that we face each and every day, how in the world are we going to be able to rule and reign with him? Every day is a training day. Every day is part of that boot camp to get us, to get our hearts, to get our minds focused on him, not to give in to the attack of the enemy, not to give in to the fear, because that's what the enemy uses. The enemy uses fear to keep you in suspense, to keep you in anxiety and turmoil, to paralyze you, fear to imprison you. I mean, literally, some people are so fearful that they won't even leave their house. They've just become so uh, enclosed because of all the fear and the anxiety that goes on. Now let me read to you the charge that God gave Joshua before he went into the promised land to overcome all the enemies of fear and dread. These are uh, <clears throat> some of the enemies, these are the same enemies, by the way, that we face and that we battle with. So they're getting ready to go into the promised land, and that is a perfect picture for us because the battles that we face, the promised land in our heart and our mind, the, the enemies of dread, the enemies of fear, we're facing the exact same type of enemies that Joshua and the nation of Israel was going. And so this is what God said to him to encourage Joshua, and I believe it applies to us today. He says, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Remember what he said? Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. So no one can stand against us. If God is for us, who is against us? As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Isn't that a great promise from God? It doesn't matter where you're at right now, whatever battle you're facing, God said he will never leave us or forsake us. He says, and he says this three times, he says, be strong and courageous 
because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore their forefathers to give them. Now on the outside, it may not have looked a lot of times like they were winning the battle or they could overcome the battle, but he already told them, hey, don't get fearful, don't get anxious, be strong, be courageous, I'm gonna take you through. Be strong and be very courageous, be careful, to, uh, to keep all, uh, all the commands my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn to the right or to the left, that you may be successful in wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. You get the idea? What do we do every day? Meditate. Get into the presence of God. Let his love fill our hearts. Meditate on this day and night. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Same battles that they faced then are the same battles that we are all facing today but the secret is is that God has given us the power to overcome now it could have been easy easy for God to do it all for us we could just sit back and relax and let him fight all the battles uh, I was having uh, lunch this week with a fella uh, uh, from our church and uh, telling me about his son uh, who was working to get uh, score on his SAT so that he could get a scholarship and he had to battle and battle and take it two or three times and the third time he got the score that he needed and he was so happy he was so filled with joy he just couldn't stop because he was able to overcome that's why God is allowing us to go through these battles because he knows that we can win because he is with us and so don't let the enemy get you down with fear, with anxiety, uh, all of that. Hey, we have, we have a pretty good enemy to spar with, don't we? I mean, he is, he's pretty tough, but there's one who is tougher than him. Amen? Amen. Hey, say it with me. Greater is he, Greater is he who, is who is in me than he who is in the world. So when that fear tries to get on you, you just push the enemy away because he cannot overcome God. Love overcomes fear. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. Now here is our daily test to show the level of God's love in our heart. You know what that daily test is? Well, John tells us in verse uh, 19 uh, to 21. Let's look at letter B. We cannot love God and hate man at the same time. So in verse 19, John says this, We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. So first, you know, have you ever been a jerk in your life? I have. Have you ever gossiped in your life? I have. Have you intentionally or unintentionally hurt other people? I think I've done both. You know, I have done all of these things. And the point is, is that if we judge or hate other people, we judge as though we are perfect without fault or blameless as we're looking down on other people. That was the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. You know, he says, I'm glad I'm not like him and that I do all these things for God. He was judging from a point of perfection. But I want to tell you, if God judged us the way that we judge other people, how many of us would be in trouble? Amen? 
Well, I want to tell you a secret. It's not really a secret, but that's exactly the way God judges us. He says, with the measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So I think I would rather use my measuring cup with mercy, with grace, and with love, so that will be measured back to me. If I'm going to measure out with judgment, watch out. It's going to come back to you because God doesn't want us to live that way. With the measure that we use, it should be measured out to us. The people around us, you know what they are? They are our mirrors. They are our spiritual mirrors that we can show us our hearts. God shows us our heart through other people. When people hurt us, when they mistreat us, can be harsh and nasty, our flesh always wants to respond in kind. I can see my flesh just rising up when people are doing things that are disrespectful or hurtful and all of that's kind of working inside of me. So how do we love people who are unlovely? We must be filled with God's love and let it spill over to them. Hey, I was reminded of a story yesterday with the uh, men's group, and I want to share it with you today. There was a good friend of mine. His name was Danny Tepovich. A true story, he was saved just a few years, and his background, he was a, uh, a rock and roller. He was one of those uh, uh, in a big band type thing. He was playing uh, at the Diplomat Hotel back in the 70s, making big money, had the girls, the drugs, and the cars, and everything else. Well, he got saved supernaturally, and uh, his whole life, he really changed and transformed, and so he was going to get out of that lifestyle, and uh, he wanted to get a regular job and, you know, build a career and that type of thing, and so he gets a job in this computer uh, place, when he didn't know anything about computers. I mean, he was a rock and roll drug head. And uh, so he's, you know, kind of trying to learn and to grow into this, uh, this new business. Well, the guy, one of the managers there, he just didn't like Danny. And he just would rip him a new one all the time. Have you ever been in a situation where you really don't, you know, you just haven't learned and you're really kind of like a sponge trying to soak it all in? and somebody who knows more than you do just kind of dumps on you, well, that's where he was at. And so, you know, man, you need to quit. You can't do this job, da, da, da. And just day after day after day. And so, uh, he, you know, he's young in the Lord, and God began to speak to him. And um, I don't know what the other guy's name was. I called him Mark yesterday. I'll call him Mark today. Uh, God spoke to him and said, hey, Thursday's uh, Mark's birthday. I want you to get him a cake. And, of course, he said, no way, I'm not getting that guy a cake. Have you, have you ever wrestled with God? You know, God's trying to tell you to do something and you're wrestling with him? Uh, I, I do it all the time. There's that wrestling match that goes inside with my flesh. And he's saying, I'm just not going to do it, you know? His pride was hurt. And so every day, uh, God was just kind of needling him. You know, Danny, you really need to get him a cake. And so uh, by Wednesday night, he said, all right. I'll do it. And he wasn't going to do it very happily. He was just going to be obedient. So he went, he got a cake, he goes to work, uh, and uh, everybody else was out of the office. And so he uh, just went up to Mark and he said, hey, listen, uh, I know today's your birthday here. I got you a cake. And Mark just looked at it and he turned around and he just went into the back room. You know, and Danny's like, what is wrong with this guy? You know, I just got him a cake. I want to you know, build a bridge here. And uh, finally, after about five minutes, he goes to the uh, back room to see what's up. And uh, Mark is there, and he's crying. He had never in his life received a birthday cake. Not from his parents. Nobody celebrated his birthday. You know, nobody thought that he was worth anything. And here it is. This guy that he knew that he was dumping on came and got him a cake and it began to break him and to break his heart. The Bible says that a gentle word turns away wrath. Danny had no idea that 
no one had ever bought him a cake. He could only see in the moment. We can only see people in the moment when they're angry, when they're hurt, when they're nasty. And we don't see what's going on deep inside. God could see what was going on deep inside. So when we see people that are rough and abrasive on the outside, a lot of times, to me, that's a signal that, um, you know, they probably had something really bad happen to them in their past. And when you can see another person through God's eyes, when you can love another person who's unlovely, and that began to break the ice in his heart. Amen? Amen. Hey, we're going to get ready and close, so Joy, if you want to uh, come. I want to share one more story with you before, uh, before we uh, uh, close. Um, you know, so Danny didn't know why he was angry and nasty and critical, but God knows the past. He could see his childhood, and the meaner and nastier he was, God was setting him up for breakthrough with love. Amen? So uh, this past Thursday, and I'm always amazed at how God does this. I mean, I really don't. And listen, if we're just abiding in God's love, he's got divine appointments. You have no idea when or how they're going to occur. So Thursday morning, I go to get my teeth clean. I've been going to uh, this uh, dental place for a couple of years. And uh, so I'm there, I'm in the, uh, in the chair, and I'm talking to the lady who I've kind of developed a relationship over a while, and I'm just asking her how things are going. And uh, so she begins to open up and share. And she said she was going to renew her vows with her husband, and uh, that her husband had uh, pancreatic cancer five years ago. He was in remission, and now they found some spots on his uh, liver. And so uh, I said, you know, after we're done, uh, you know, I'd like to, to pray for you. And you can't pray while you're sitting in the chair and she's working, uh, you know, with all those things, you know. Or, or, you know, so she, uh, I said, you know, I'd like to pray for you after uh, we're done. And she found out that I was a pastor, and so uh, we got finished. And uh, she says, wait a minute, I want to go get my office manager. I want her to pray with us too. I said, okay. So we're in this little cubicle. In comes the office manager. In comes another lady. Now all of a sudden there's three of us. She wants me to uh, pray for her, pray for the office. And uh, so we start praying and I close my eyes and I'm praying. And when I finish, I, w I open up my eyes and there's the dentist. He's there with all four of them with his hands around him. And we're having this prayer meeting in this little cubicle. I mean, it never happened to me before how, you know, God did that. And I, I guess the prayer was, you know, so-so because they didn't give me a break on the uh, price. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, God's love, when it overflows, it will touch other people. You have no idea what other people are going through to be sensitive and open, and that's how we win the world. Amen? Hey, let's go ahead and... Uh, Close in prayer.